Rapid Response. Our Rapid Response program involves two components, our Patient Assistance Fund and our Person-Centered Solutions Social Work Triage Team. The Rapid Response Fund is different in the fact that, one, we really do mean rapid. There are a lot of patient assistance programs out there that you may need to wait six to eight weeks before you would see any money after you apply for assistance. We know that if somebody is if facing an emergency, such as only having a few days or a week to ward off eviction, that's where we come in. And this is where we don't necessarily support somebody based on when they apply, but what they come to us with. And that's where our social work team will come in to help prioritize who needs to be moved up on our list based on how serious the need is and how urgent it is. We will support this program initially through the CanaCares sponsorships after paying for the, the cost of the CanaCares program itself. So anything that is remaining on top of that, any additional proceeds would be funneled into the Rapid Response Fund. All of our social service programs will work in conjunction with others. So our team of all the different program directors will meet regularly and talk about uh, individual needs for somebody that comes to our program. So that means if somebody comes to us um, for a very specific need, we're going to ask them what else is going on in their life that we might be able to help plug them in socially, um, help them connect with programs in their area, whatever it is that they might need. We know that when they're coming to us, there's more that's going on for them most likely than just a standalone request. Our program is geared toward supporting needs that are not met elsewhere. And that means, you know, if we get a resource list, we find that there are all kinds of reasons why we're not eligible. It could be that they don't consider oral treatment to be active treatment, things like that. So in order to qualify for help with our program, you need to be able to show your financial need and also that you are a stage four cancer patient. We'll help with rental and mortgage assistance for one-time only crises. If somebody needs more than that, then they would be appropriate for our housing program once that's up and running. We'll help with moving expenses and hiring people to pack and unpack, security deposit help, short-term storage costs. And a big thing that, that we'll offer, which hopefully we won't have to do for very much longer if they're able to speed up the approval timeframe for SSDI. But a lot of people don't leave their jobs because they can't afford that period of time between when they submit an SSDI application and when they actually get their first payment and back pay. So we want to be able to offer multi-month support for people so that they're not continuing to work just because they don't have another solution. We'll also offer help with transportation to see experts in other cities. So while we might say that's a second or third opinion, it could be a lot further down the road when a, a treatment change is called for and it means that you have to go somewhere else to get that expertise. So we will help with airfare, hotel, ground transit, all of that. Dental care is something that I feel very strongly about as I definitely have some issues as a result of treatment, as many people do. There really aren't very many options out there. We want to be able to help with car repairs and even used car acquisitions. One idea that we have is potentially partnering with an auto repair training program so that we can get cars that could be used for patients if they were just brought up to speed in terms of safety and reliability. Um, laptops and computers, it's really important that people stay connected. So, you know, we can resolve those things very easily. Another area where there are programs out there that can help with pet food and, and vet bills if a dog or cat needs surgery. But again, with our rapid response program, we're certainly not going to sit by and watch somebody lose a beloved animal just because they can't afford to pay for surgery. We'll help with emergency food. And that's something that we would want to be able to get some money in somebody's pocket within 24 to 48 hours. Gas cards also receive quickly. And other needs that other cancer patient assistance programs just don't do. And there are many. So we're not going to have a list that says, this is all we do. If somebody has a need and we can figure out how to satisfy that, that falls within our purview. We will fund the rapid response financial relief system through a number of different fundraising vehicles. 
as mentioned before, will rely on the Canacares and other sponsorship dollars to help support this need. We'll also look at institutional giving and donations from the general public. We'll look at grants. And then there are donor established funds. We are not moving into donor advised funds, so I want to make a distinction on that. The donor established funds can be set up in honor or in memory of someone. The person who establishes the fund will be able to establish the criteria for eligibility. However, we ask that they set that based on the type of need rather than a cancer type. And we say that because people with rarer cancers are going to have less available to them. And we always want people to be mindful of that. Now, this won't be a donor advised fund, so it won't be that the donor themselves select recipients, but we don't have any other restrictions other than setting up a fund that supports a certain type of need. And that might be that somebody says, I want this to support dental costs. I want this to support, you know, surgeries for pets. Uh, it might be travel. It could be anything that is of interest to that particular donor. We also ask that they commit to fueling that fund for no less than three years. When the Rapid Response Fund has no available monies, we will turn to peer-to-peer -peer giving and what we call our more-for-four first responders. And that means if somebody comes to us and they are in dire need of help right away and we don't have the resources to help them, we will take this to social media and ask people who have already signed up to say they will help as they can to chip in a couple bucks to try to come up with money fast for that particular person and that particular need. We will also build an endowment, although it is not likely that that will happen for at least a few more years. The goal of triage is to offer the right level of support at the right time. And for some people, they might just need a referral or a recommendation or a little bit of guidance. And other people need full-on handholding. All triage services will be provided via email, telephone, and video call. So once we're up and running, it doesn't matter where someone lives, as long as they're in the United States, we can support them. Our streamlined application process will cover all needs at once. So someone who's coming to us for something very specific might just check one single box. But then they also might see that there are other things listed there that they also need. So we're trying to, again, streamline the process, find out what all of their needs are, and then we can route applications accordingly. One thing we do know for sure is that stage four patients who have unmet needs, and this is especially with regard to lack of resources, it can be incredibly overwhelming, so much so that we get stuck in the freeze part of the fight and flight response. So it's important to us that we recognize when people really do need us to walk them through applications. And that's easy to do. We have Zoom these days and screen sharing capabilities. If we cannot prepare an application for somebody on their behalf, we can at least help them fill it out. So that's easy to do. We're also going to check in on people. I think there are a lot of folks who probably never get an out of the blue phone call of somebody just wondering if they're doing okay. So part of what's going to end up happening is if somebody becomes engaged with our organization and is assigned to a certain social worker, they will have an ongoing relationship with that person. And now granted, we will be hiring people with stage four cancer as a priority, which means that we'll have turnover with staff. But we do want people to, to feel as though they already have a contact and somebody to call, whether that's just for a simple need or because there's an emergency. But what's important to realize on this is that if you're already in our system and you need help, you don't need to fill out a new application. You can come to us directly. More for Four will be introducing a, a truly high-tech, fully interactive website. And we're not there yet, but this is what is coming probably within the next six months. No matter what our website looks like at any given time, people who need help will always find the information for applying on our Get Help page. 